Hi everyone. Once again, welcome back to BJ's Passion. It's a while that I was think, planning to upload this particular video, but then I didn't get time as I was a bit busy with my work. Anyways, I'm back to share with you the experiment that I have done for my son's birthday celebration. As I wanted to try out a red velvet cake, I tried the recipe with the color that I had and this is the outcome. If you are new to my channel, share with your friends and subscribe to my channel with post notifications turned on for more cooking videos. Let's start with our recipe. Let's make our dry ingredients ready. For that I have taken 2 cups of all purpose flour plus 2 tablespoons of cocoa powder, 2 teaspoons of baking powder and 1 teaspoon of baking soda. To make it easy, I grinded it all together in a mixer and kept my dry ingredients ready. I have used 1.5 cups of sugar for 2 cups of all purpose flour. You can increase the sugar amount if you would like to have more sugar. That also I grinded and kept the powdered sugar too ready to make the cake. So our dry ingredients it's all ready now. Here is our all purpose flour, cocoa powder, baking powder and baking soda all together. This is it is ready over here as you can see over here. For the batter preparation of the cake, keeping the dry ingredients ready is the first part and if that is done means half part of our cake baking is done. And here our half part is done along with our powdered sugar also. That also is kept ready here to make my preparing the cake batter easy. I've kept these two ready by the time of now. And so now I, for my red velvet cake I need buttermilk but I am not having the buttermilk instead I am using vinegar so I am using apple cider vinegar I was having that so I used 2 teaspoons of that one but instead if you are having white vinegar you can use that also once we prepare that we can keep that aside until we are mixing the batter for the cake as I was in a hurry to make the cake I used double boiling method to melt the butter but it's always better to keep the butter in room temperature and use it to prepare our cake batter that will give you a better texture for our cake you can always keep it in the other way now I'm adding the powdered sugar along with that that also along with the butter we are mixing it nicely add the powdered sugar part by part so that we can blend it all together and get a nice consistency for our cake and once we finish adding or blending our powdered sugar fully yeah as you can see over here yeah i'm doing it part by part not all together now once it is done then we can add or we can combine the eggs one by one My children are there around me while I'm baking so they are helping me in uh, for the baking part and he's the one my son he's the one who is adding the eggs one by one and he is trying it you can see over here and it is a uh, fun for us like we all together when do while doing it we enjoy the company each other and we are doing it all together so I hope you also will enjoy that while doing it once we finish blending all the eggs together then to avoid the smell of the egg yolk we can add vanilla essence i added two teaspoons of vanilla essence as you can see over here we will blend the vanilla essence along with the butter and sugar and here it's my daughter who is helping me in the blending as i told you earlier doing it all together we enjoy the company each other between i forgot about the buttermilk that we kept aside this one we can add this time or after putting the dry ingredients i added it now itself and then i'm blending that also in and then i added the dry ingredients yes yeah we can see over here yeah that is done so fast to just to see that procedure and i'm, uh, I'm adding my dry ingredients also now and fold that in part by part as always we do fold the dry ingredients a little by little instead of uh, to avoid the clumping to avoid that we can add it a little by little 
at this point of time i am adding the red color which i had with me so i am adding that two teaspoons i have added so you can see the color of my batter is changing yeah we got a nice color over here it's a nice color i like the color even though i didn't get the red color for the red velvet cake but i was really happy because of the taste that the cake had and we all enjoyed it so let's see the rest of the procedure now we are folding the dry ingredients a little by little and to make the video timing a little less i just use time lapse for my videos and here i'm adding the second teaspoon of the color earlier even if i said two teaspoons i used only one teaspoon that time the second teaspoon of color is in and now a little more of the ingredients is left and we are folding it in a little by little it's a while that I took this video so I forgot about the third teaspoon of color that I've added but if you don't want you can avoid it and actually if you are using the super red color or tomato red color you may not be needing this much color or you can use according to your wish that's absolutely fine and we are folding the dry ingredients all together for in a fast way I'm just showing it to you so that you can see the full procedure that I have done so that is being done and once we are finishing it yeah but then here you can see the consistency of my batter i wanted it to be a little more loose because of that at this point of time we have kept a part of our buttermilk ready it is there already so we can add a little of that once again to make the batter consistency proper so i'm adding here a little or a little more of the buttermilk which is kept over there i'm adding it and folding it in once again for the final batter for my cake red velvet cake is ready and we are going to pour it in to the cake tin here you can see the final stages of my cake batter and it's ready yeah now we are transferring the cake batter to the tin yeah you can see over here and I have kept my oven preheated at 220 degrees Celsius and it all depends upon the oven that you have I have kept it in, in that temperature it is degree Celsius and I am going to bake my cake in the oven for 35 to 40 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius but that can vary depending upon the temperature of the oven that you have that you can have an experiment with your oven and then bake it better uh, i hope but then most of the ovens will be having this temperature then yeah i am keeping it in the oven right now before keeping it in the oven tap it two three times so that the air bubbles escape it's 30 minutes now and let's check whether our cake is baked and um, inserting a barbecue stick to see whether it is baked and a small particle we can see over here and means we need a little more time for the baking i'm keeping it for five more minutes and after that let's check once again so now let's check one more time and this time our barbecue stick it came out clean so means our cake is baked and let it rest yeah so i'm keeping it for some time i baked this cake at night and so then i kept uh, a mesh wire mesh on top of that that is why you can see some marks over there on the top of the cake and my cake is ready now i got it nicely baked you can see and just uh, taking it out from the mold yeah it is cool I'm just uh, taking that paper butter paper which I get on the sides and taking it out that is actually it's not that compulsory it's um, up to you if you don't want you don't have to keep it and especially with this type of cake tin it, it will come out smoothly so that is not that required but I just kept it for a safer side
It's always better to allow the cake to rest for some time, especially a night if you can keep it is always better. So I kept for one night and now I'm going to layer the cake into three different layers. See you can hear, you can see it over here that I'm layering it. Now you can do it according however you wish or however whatever is easy for you. Some people do it with a thread and this with a knife it is easy for me. So I do it that way so however or whatever is easy for you you can do it that way taking out the butter paper that we kept in the cake tin that's very easy especially after one night it will come out so smoothly and it is easy to remove that particular butter paper from the cake you can see it is uh, evenly distributed the cake we have four different layers because the top layer also i cut and kept it separately now I am going to make the uh, cheese frosting for the but, uh, red velvet cake. Here I have the heritage cream cheese I do have of two packets I do have. So usually I like uh, the Philadelphia cream cheese I didn't get it this time. And I am taking 100 gram of butter also is there which is kept in room temperature. You have to take care that all these things should be in room temperature. I have kept it all outside early itself so that it, the, all these things are in room temperature now. So I'm just separating or taking it out from the foil and going to blend it in once again so that we'll get a smooth mixture. First blend the cream cheese so that it becomes soft and once it becomes soft then we can add the butter that we have kept in room temperature along with that and once that also is blended in and once we get the mixture smooth then we can start adding the powdered sugar a little by little meaning in different parts so that the mixture will become uh, soft and fluffy and once it becomes soft and fluffy we can use that cheese frosting cheese frosting for the uh, layering and to fill it in the in the different layers that we have for our cake and here I'm adding the powdered sugar a little by little and blending it in and I have used two and a half cups of powdered sugar and if you want you can reduce that amount of quantity of sugar and if you want you can if you want more thick the layers if you want the th a layer in between to be more thick you can take a more amount of cream cheese as well as powdered sugar so I prefer the cake to be more and my the layering in between to be a little less because of that I have used only the exact amount of layering which is required in between so that is purely up to you you can change that particular amount according to your um, wish like if you want more of the layering in between you can use more amount here I have used two two uh, packets meaning it is of uh, one packet for me was 227 gram so two packets make it 454 grams of cream cheese and I've used two and a half cups of uh, powdered sugar plus two teaspoons of vanilla essence along with that Here I'm adding the vanilla essence, two teaspoons of vanilla essence I have added and blend that in one more time so that that gets mixed in smoothly along with our cream cheese frosting and this is the final mixture of our cream cheese frosting. Now we can apply the cream cheese frosting in the different layers of our cake keeping it one by one and I'm really sorry that I missed the part of applying the cream cheese frosting in the layers of the cake and this is the preparation for our glaze for preparing the glaze i have used 250 ml of fresh cream 100 grams of white compound 50 grams of dark compound and two tablespoons of butter once it is melted along with that i have used one teaspoon of red color the same color that i had and i'm applying the glaze to my cake and the cake is ready and we are wishing him a very happy birthday to my son. This is a part of the cake cutting ceremony which we had at home. 
hope you enjoyed watching this video and i hope all of you will try making this cake red velvet cake uh, with the super red color or the tomato red color so that you will get the exact red color for the red velvet cake and if you are watching it for the first time don't forget like share with your friends and subscribe for more videos with bj's passion thanks for watching stay tuned for the next video until that time take care see you bye bye